What's up guys? So today we're gonna to be installing a Anatory Quick Shifter. Anatory? Anatory Quick Shifter on the FZ09. Um, I just got this in the mail today. I'm kinda of excited to throw it in. So I'm gonna be showing you guys the steps you guys need to do. You know, pull the bike apart, how to install it. And then there's an app for on your phone where you can adjust some of the settings, you know, some of the sensitivity settings and, you know, duration for the uh, ignition cut and so forth. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. All right guys, before we get started, I'm gonna go over all the tools that we're gonna need for the job. So you're going to need a three millimeter or a size three Allen key metric. You need some zip ties to clean up everything if you want to. You're gonna need a four millimeter metric Allen, five millimeter metric Allen, flush cutters to clean up the zip ties if you choose to do so. A small pair of needle nose pliers just to get the vacuum hoses off of the fuel tank. Eight millimeter wrench two 10 millimeter wrenches, 10 millimeter socket, an extension for the socket, and then your choice of ratchets, as well as a tool to take off the body screws. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the box here, take a look at what's inside. So first off, we get a couple of these Anatory racing stickers. Not too bad, I mean, they're stickers, if you like that kind of thing. You can throw that somewhere. Also you get a flash by V-Cycle Nut sticker as well. I got it from uh, the website Vcycle Nut. David over there, he hooked it up. He's a pretty good guy, pretty easy to work with. All right guys, so this is how it's gonna be laid out inside the bike. You're gonna have your module, you know, hidden away, maybe underneath the seat somewhere. From the module, you have this wire, this plugs in right here. This will go to the shift linkage. We're gonna install the quick shifter itself. These right here, these are gonna go onto your battery terminals to give the module power, and then right here, this wire is going to plug in right here, and these are going to go directly to your spark plugs. It's going to go in line. So you're going to unplug your old spark plug wire, plug it into here, and then you know, plug that into the ignition coil. They also include this, this little plug, which is essentially if you ever wanted to get rid of the quick shifter or disable it temporarily, you can unplug this like this, and then you can simply put this right here and then no longer have the quick shifter enabled. All right, so you're first gonna start off removing these side panels. These take a size three metric Allen key. Got those two, there's another one right here, same size. Now we're on the other side, pull these off too. So the next step is gonna be removing these body panel screws and these have a design where you will use something like this or a small screwdriver to push in. It'll release the tension and you can pull them out. So there should be two on this side and then two on the other side. And these can be found right behind here. Try to get a good angle, but they're kind of hard to get to. Okay, they look like this. Okay, so now these panels should just be able to pull right off. You might have to fight them a tad bit, but don't be afraid to pull on it a little bit. It's not gonna break anything. They just kinda... Okay, the next step you're gonna be using a 10 millimeter socket. You're gonna be rem removing these two bolts. I already pulled this one out, so we just gotta pull this one. And then there's two on the other side as well. All right guys, the next step is gonna be removing the seat. So you're gonna take your key, I'm sure you all know this, put it into this little slot right there. Right there, and then it should just pop right off. I kinda of already popped it off, so we're just gonna remove the seat. Once the seat is removed, you're gonna expose these two size four metric Allen keys. So I got this, we're gonna go ahead and pull these two off. Once those two bolts are removed, you can pull this plastic piece up here. It's also held in with those body screws where you have to pop them out. So there should be two on the top and then two on the sides down here. Once all those are popped out, you can go ahead and pull it. Once you have all those removed, this should just pull right out. I have an USB charger glued to mine. So once I pull it out, I'm going to have to unplug it. 
once you have your plastic piece removed, there's these two rubber grommet pieces that are probably gonna come off once you start pulling the tank. So you can go ahead and remove these prior if you'd like. And these are held in, there's a hole right here. Right down here, there's a little nubbin <laughs> that it kind of slides onto to hold in place. We're gonna go ahead and lift this up, stack it right there, should be good. The next step, you're gonna have to unplug two breather hoses on your tank. So if you look right here, these rubber tubes, these are the breather hoses for the gas tank. So we're just going to go ahead and pull those off. So once you disconnect the breather hoses, you should be able to get away without unplugging the fuel line and the electrical cord. Now we're gonna take the tank, and we're just gonna rotate it 180 degrees. So first thing we're gonna do is disconnect the ECU. So to remove the air box, you're going to need a size five metric Allen key. One on the other side. So the next step, we're gonna go ahead and pull these hose clamps off. There should be one on each of the intake hoses. It's going to be a size four metric Allen. And on these, you don't wanna completely take these off. You just wanna loosen them up enough to pull them off. Before we can completely remove the air box, we're gonna to have to go ahead and pull off this bolt right here. It's a size five Allen key. Now you should just be able to pull the air box. Once you have the air box removed, you're gonna to wanna to take some sort of towel, go ahead and put them inside the throttle body, just to kind of keep the dirt out. You never know what's gonna happen. This is going to expose the spark plugs. There should be three, because it's a three cylinder. <laughs> So you have one, two, and three. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and unplug the spark plug at the plug itself. And we're going to add our quick shifter in. So we have our harness from our anatory quick shifter. And right here, we have our spark plug plug. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and install these directly in line. So you're gonna take the plug you just pulled off the spark plug. You're gonna take your quick shifter and plug that in right there. And then on the other side, this side, you're gonna plug it into where the spark plug was plugged in previously. So you're gonna go ahead and plug this directly into the spark plug. Just like that. You're gonna to wanna to do this with all three. Once you have the spark plugs plugged in, you're good to move to the next step. So I'm just going to go ahead and move this wire so that I can route it to the back end of the bike. Kind of hang this out of the way for now. So now we're gonna put the air box back on. So you're just gonna basically do the exact same steps you just did, just in reverse. Okay, we've got the tank back on, air box is on, ECU's plugged in. Now we just have to lift this up and plug in the breather hoses and this portion of the install should be good to go. We just got the hoses clamped in place. My lovely girlfriend is helping us out today. So that is very nice of her because doing it with two people is a little bit easier. So I went ahead and routed this cable, which goes to the spark plugs, basically underneath the air box. And I'm gonna have it come through here. I'm gonna route it so that it'll be plugged in somewhere right underneath the tank to plug directly into this cable from the quick shifter module. All right guys, so the next step is to install the aftermarket shift linkage as well as the quick shifter. For this, we're going to need two 10 millimeter wrenches and we're just going to disassemble the old linkage. So I went ahead and assembled the shift linkage with the quick shifter on it. I'm going to go ahead and install the quick shifter itself.
All right, guys, so I just got the shift linkage installed with the quick shifter on it. So just a little word of advice. I've been messing with this thing for probably a good 30 minutes to an hour now. And it comes with two long bolts and then there's one small bolt, shorter bolt. So the shorter bolt is gonna go on the bottom and then the longer bolts are gonna go in between the quick shifter and the rod and the other long one's gonna go right here. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna put two washers here and you're gonna put one, you wanna put one washer here. And before you route this wire, you're going to want to screw this screw all the way into this quick shifter. And then you're gonna to wanna to take the quick shifter itself and turn it and screw it all the way in to here. And you wanna make it really tight. Then you're gonna, you know, I, I used an eight millimeter wrench and just put it on these little black pieces right here. And I was able to, you know, tighten it to the right amount that I needed. Did that and then I connected this got these nice and tight and kind of adjust it to where your uh, shift lever is comfortable for you and then you should route the wire. So that was kind of a pain, thought I'd give you guys that tip. Just routed this cable up, so now we got the cable to the quick shifter on the shift linkage. And we also have the cable for the spark plugs right here. I went ahead and routed it underneath the tank, made the connection, zip tied it, made it look nice. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just plug this in to this one right here. Coming off the module. Let's see what we're gonna do this. Probably just put this on the back, put this underneath, plug this in right here. And then all we gotta do is connect this positive lead to the positive side of the battery. After installing, you should get a blinking green light. So that tells you that everything is in the correct position, everything's wired up right, so that's good news. All right, I'm gonna zip tie this up, make it look real clean real quick. I used some double-sided tape to make sure that stays in place. Went ahead and got the wires all zip tied up. Just kind of get them out of the way. So now we're gonna connect to the app, just verify that all the settings look correct. So I just got it connected. Whenever you get this connected, the only settings that you're gonna wanna change I'm gonna leave the sensitivity, kill time, and RFX all stock because it comes you know, stock where it should be. Once I ride it, I, I might play around with it a little bit to get it to where I like it. You have this push and a pull. And what those are for is if you have your bike set up with like a MotoGP shifter or whatever where you push down to shift up a gear, then you're gonna wanna do push. And if you have it, you know, like a stock normal bike, it's gonna be pull because you're pulling up the lever to change gears up. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable push. I'm gonna go ahead and keep pull. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and test it out. So we're going to put the bike, we're gonna turn the bike on, we're gonna shift all the way up into sixth gear and we're gonna to try to shift past sixth gear and see if we can hear an ignition cut. Alright guys, we just did the test, shifted all the way into sixth gear, you know, try to keep going past that and you could hear a slight ignition cut, you know, it'd be going right. So it's cutting the it's cutting the uh, the ignition a little bit per shift. So and then I also did first gear slowly into it, shifting to second, and it just you know immediately went right into it. So felt good. I think it's all set up, so let's take it for a ride and see how she goes.
right, guys, that's going to wrap up the vid. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, stick around. If you guys like this kind of content, I'll be doing some more install vids, some reviews and whatnot. I just like to make some moto vlogs as well, just doing like... So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.